SpaceX clearly knows how to get satellites into space quickly and effectively. Almost every time, they put on a beautiful show for the people in the area and the thousands of people watching online. The last time Falcon Heavy took off was no different. For one thing, the reusable rocket didn't have landing legs, and all three boosters were used up during the journey, which isn't how they usually work. A dark band at the top of the upper stage was also important to the launch's success. But more importantly, the fiery re-entry of the fairing is also the hottest SpaceX has ever seen. So what's the most important difference? How is Elon Musk making the Falcon Heavy go faster? On today's episode, we cover all of this and more. Last Sunday at 8.26 p.m. ET, the Falcon Heavy took off under a dark sky. About three minutes into the flight, the rocket went back up into the sun. This lit up the exhaust plume, making it a beautiful orange color. After the side core boosters broke off, the Falcon Heavy center core kept putting on a show high in the upper atmosphere. The huge cloud of smoke was bright white and almost looked like a flower. It's only the rocket's sixth launch ever, and the second one in 2023 so far. Only NASA's space launch system, which has only flown once, and SpaceX's still under development Starship, which blew up before reaching space during a test launch in April, are more powerful than it. It's basically three Falcon 9 rockets joined together with 27 Merlin engines that produce 5.1 million pounds of power at launch. But unlike past Falcon Heavy launches, SpaceX didn't bring any of the three first-stage rockets back for a vertical landing. For this mission to reach its goal orbit, the upper-stage engine has to fire three times, which takes about six hours. Eight minutes after launch, the Falcon Heavy's upper stage's single engine shut down. This put the ship into an initial parking orbit. Over the next three hours and 44 minutes, the satellite was supposed to be fired twice more to get it into the planned geosynchronous orbit 22,300 miles above the equator. This is because putting a satellite directly into geosynchronous orbit is one of the most difficult types of missions in the launch business. A geostationary orbit is a circular geosynchronous orbit that is 35,000 786 kilometers, 22,236 miles, above the Earth's equator. It is also called a geosynchronous equatorial orbit. Compared to, say, low Earth orbit, GEO is much harder, and when the weight of the package is big, it needs a very powerful launch vehicle. The plan calls for longer-lasting batteries on the upper stage and a special band of gray thermal paint on the rocket to keep the kerosene fuel from freezing during the hours it spends in space's cold environment. Because of this, SpaceX didn't need to put landing legs or grid fins on even one of the three rockets. As for what happened to them, after they broke apart, the boosters fell into the Atlantic Ocean and were used up. Two of the three boosters had flown before. One had flown eight times, and the other had flown three times. The rookie is in the spotlight. The normal amount of weight that can be sent to a geostationary transfer orbit is eight tons or 18,000 pounds if all three first-stage cores are recovered. In fully disposable mode, each launch costs 97 million US dollars and uses 26.7 tons of fuel. This gives you a better idea of how much the payload and speed go up when the rockets run out. Viasat hasn't said how much it paid SpaceX for the launch. Last year, Intelsat said that SpaceX charged more for a launch where the booster is used up, but that's not all that's different about this special launch. If you're a big fan of SpaceX, you'll notice that part of the upper stage has a gray band on it. Most of the time, Falcon's upper stages look very similar to each other. However, the upper stage that is kept behind the most recent upper stage in the center has a gray band around the bottom of its airframe that makes it stand out. In July of 2019, SpaceX tried another Falcon 9 upper stage with the same gray band. A spokesperson said this was done to make the rocket last longer in space. For some of the hardest launch paths, orbital coasts of six hours or more are needed. Direct flights to geostationary are the most popular tasks that need long coast capabilities, and the U.S. military often asks for them. The gray band's job is to soak up more heat from the sun, so that the liquid kerosene, or RP-1 fuel, inside the rocket part can be warmed up when it gets too cool. Before it freezes solid, kerosene gets thick and slushy, 
This is because it freezes at a much higher temperature than Falcon's liquid oxygen oxidant. If eaten, wet fuel would probably stop the Merlin engine on the upper stage from starting or destroy it. And finally, when the safe pieces of a SpaceX rocket finally landed on Earth after the launch, they made big waves. SpaceX shared amazing video of one of the two fairings that went on the latest Falcon Heavy flight as it came back to Earth. This is the first time that fairings that have already been used on a Falcon Heavy flight are being used again, shortly after the second stage split and started its burn to put the packages into geostationary Earth orbit. The fairing halves opened up, revealing the three satellites. After separating from the second stage, the shield halves floated to their apogee or highest point before starting their trip back through Earth's atmosphere. The fairings are flying through the air at 15 times the speed of sound, making this the most bold try to get them back so far. On Tuesday, May 2nd, SpaceX wrote in a tweet that the re-entry of the fairing on the Viasat 3 mission was the hottest and fastest one they had ever tried. This time, the speed difference between MECO and Stage 2 was over 17,000 kilometers per hour. This is how crazy a Falcon Heavy rocket is at full speed. After a scary trip through the atmosphere, the fairings use a parachute to drop softly in the Atlantic Ocean, more than 1,200 miles from Florida. This is the farthest they have traveled so far. The fairing recovery ship Doug, which was called for Demo 2 crew member Doug Hurley, was ready to get the fairings out of the water. We don't know yet if only one half of the fairing was found, or if both were. When the rescue ship goes back to Port Canaveral, We'll get our first look at the fairings, which looked like shooting stars as they flew through the air. SpaceX had a busy few days leading up to Sunday's flight. On Thursday, it launched 46 of its own low-altitude Starlink Internet satellites from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base. The company then used the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to launch two medium-altitude Internet satellites for SES in Luxembourg on Friday. All three launches show that there is a race to set up internet relay points in space so that users anywhere in the world, even in rural, hard-to-reach, or underserved areas, as well as on airplanes and ships at sea, can get broadband internet access. This year, the Falcon Heavy is set to take off on three more flights. The USS-52 mission will not take off before June 23rd, and the Echo Star 24 or Jupiter-3 payload won't take off before August of this year. The October 5th date is planned for the launch of the NASA Psyche asteroid probe. Then, in 2024, five trips are planned, with Europa Clipper being one of the most important ones. Europa Clipper will do a thorough study of Europa and use a set of high-tech scientific equipment to find out if the conditions on the icy moon are good for life. In short, Falcon Heavy will still be a dangerous beast before Starship goes into service. That ends today's video. Please share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching.